Okay, so good morning, Minga Lava, everybody. So my name is Iñaki Villar. Thank you very much for coming here. I'm Android developer, GD in Kotlin and Android. Here it was my Twitter account, but it's not there. So, <laughs> so the only letter missing is like W and C. And whoop, so how many Android developers we have in the room? So perfect, perfect. Perfect, because maybe this talk is going to be a bit technical and it would be nice to have like the knowledge of, of Gradle, Android, and so on. So the title, the title it was The Bill Shrug, and it's coming from one book that is called The Atlas Shrug by the American writer, American-Russian writer N. Rand that is called the Atlas Rack. I'm not going to enter too much in details about the book because like it's very long, but as you can see here, so it's like the Atlas is like the reference on the book and explains uh, in the Greek mythology there is an Atlas that's a Titan that was holding the celestial sphere, the wall, and it's like an internal fight because it was like struggling with, uh, with, uh, with the weight. I'm not going to enter too much in details about that. But I really like the idea. If you have the, if you give me the license, I want to translate this. Instead of the celestial sphere, we're going to have our Android Studio, or projects, or awesome APKs, and instead of Atlas, greater, right? <laughs> the build system. So build systems are quite important. That's something that maybe we are not taking uh, a lot of attention because at the end of the day. We are Android developers, we are paid to develop applications, right? And 10 years ago, we were told that we are going to change the world, but now we have to develop features, really things, fight against dependency injection frameworks or whatever. But, so if without the build systems, we cannot build the APKs, right? Even if you are very good developer or whatever, so you cannot build an APK. So the thing here is like, they're playing a very clear, critical role because affecting the productivity, the speed, and the performance. Some what well, we have here, people with very working in very huge teams, and I'm sure that they here sometimes that they are not very happy because the project is very slow, compiling or building, and that's something that affects, right? Even we have on internet a lot of menace that people fighting with source say, no, I'm waiting for the compile of whatever. So this happened only no, not with Gradle, uh, with SBT, the people of Scala, saying the same. So that's something that is very important. And even that in your company, you have a dedicated team working on the, on the build process. Sooner or later, you're going to face some problems with the build system. And you have to know to understand how works internally these build systems. <coughs> Build systems are present in software since ever. If you think, for example, in C, you have CMake, and they are working with different architectures or languages, like uh, dynamic, static languages, or static type languages, with dynamic dependencies, static dependencies, and you, we cannot say that a single definition about that. So, but anyways, a build system, <coughs> It's going to, well, it's any activity that involves the transformation on a form of data, the input, in another form of data, as simple as that. So to understand better in our context of Android developers, imagine that you have your source file that is a Kotlin file, so the build system is going to transform a source file, the input, in an output data, the class, the bytecode required. Another example would be the classes. So the bytecode is going to be transformed in a DEX format required by our APKs. At the end, it's as simple as this. But let's go deeper. So imagine this is like a typical example. I'm not talking about any specific language where we have like our control version system with our source code. And the first transformation of input output that we are going to do is uh, coming like the source in the object representation required by the runtime environment, right? In case of Java or Kotlin, is the bytecode. This is like this object. After that, because we are not going to stop only with the Kotlin com or, or with the bytecode, we need to do more things. 
Another action would be uh, get the input would be like the classes, the object re representation, and we are going to generate an executable program, a dot .exe, for example. This is another part of the system. And finally, we are going to get the executable program, and with the data, images, and resources, we are going to get a release package. All these points in the middle are the composition of the build system, because again, the Kotlin compiler or the Java compiler are only uh, build tools. They are not a build system at all, right? So the combination of everything is going to be like the, the composition of the build system. Here <laughs> is like a task dependency graph of a simple Kotlin model where uh, we, are, we want to execute uh, an assembled task. This is like the, the last step. I don't know if you can see correctly, but this is like the assemble. Build systems usually not only Gradle. When you want to execute a sequence of actions of tasks, it's going to build like a task dependency graph with the dependencies between the different tasks. Because if I want to do assemble in a Kotlin project, the first thing that they have to do, I'm ignoring some details, is compiling the code, the compiling the source code. If I'm not compiling the code, I'm not. You know, <laughs> I can have like some problems, right? So after that. I'm going to compile the Java because the plugin of Kotlin is doing that. You know that we have like a total interoperability between the, the, the two languages. So imagine that in this step, the input is going to be the output of the previous task, the compiled Java. So then if we continue, we are going to execute this task that is classes. This is going to transform the input that is the compiled Java files and the compiled Kotlin files and we are going to generate the bytecode. It's another task. Finally, we are going to use some packaging options because we want to package the bytecode. We are going to select the YAR format, and overall, this is the assemble. This is very simple, but very simple. So again, maybe if you are not uh, related with Android now, so maybe it's a complex, but it's quite simple because I have my Kotlin core model, my, my Kotlin model, and I'm compiling, um, packaging, and I'm assembling. That's everything. But again, this is like a very simple thing, and the real world is not this. So this is like the project from Google called Android Play. It has only eight models, eight models in the Android, and contains more than 400 uh, tasks and more than 1,000 references between the tasks. So imagine how complex it could be. And this only with eight models. Imagine with uh, 100 models, how long could be? And the relation, like I was applying some graph algorithms here, and you can detect which uh, tasks they have more weight. And of course, right? So you can understand the pre-built tasks are very important. But the funny thing here is like this is uh, the representation of the test sharp model between the different models. And here you can see all the relations. For example, I think that this of the task has something related with Kotlin, because if you have dependency with another model, the Kotlin, the Kotlin task at the same time is going to ask dependencies with another model. So it's becoming complex and complex and complex. Android is not easy to build. We have a lot of different steps, and we have to think like how, how costly is the, is the representation. OK, so in before finish this introduction, so in terms of build systems, if we can think what are the four main features that has to support, first of all, it has to be convenience. That means that the build tool and the build scripts, so the developers shouldn't, uh, should focus more time developing the features and not spending time in the, in the build tool itself, right? So it's like not very good if I'm spending my time trying to fix the build.gradle instead of developing my, 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 my application. Correctness, so the build system always should compile the files in the correct order. There is uh, more advanced topics in Android or in Gradle, like task avoidance compilation, that should, like the build system should provide, because it's one of the main features that you are, are looking for a, for a build system. Performance, in a real world, the build system should finish the process without delays, right? So that's something that we want, well, you know? And scalability, so imagine that 
the build system should behave on the same or almost the same with 10 files, with 10 source files and with 10 million source files. That's something that of course not all the build systems are achieving. If we need to say there are hundreds actually of build systems around, so but there's like well, some of them, Maven, uh, for example, is like uh, popular, CMake, of course, and in terms of Android, actually, I would say that uh, most for users, there will be Maven, still there are people using Maven and Ant as build system. It was the previous official build system, but it's coming from Facebook, and Uber has um, a port to trying to migrate your Gradle files into, into back. Basel and Gradle, that's the topics that we are going to talk. So here, one of the recommendations, okay, uh, the, bill, the official build system for Android is Gradle, so, but there are some big companies that they are migrating to other build systems. So the main feature of these companies is they have dedicated resources to apply the, to, to investigate in these things. So don't try to make the mistake of trying to migrate your project to Basel if you don't have resources in your project. Talking about Basel, Basel is the build system coming from Google. It's based on the internal tool, on the build, build system internal that it was using Google that's called Blaze, uh, almost the same name. And it has more than 10 years well, of experience trying to iterate everything. So imagine in terms of scalability, so how Google can achieve results with this build system. Uh, supports more than 40 different languages, that's very cool. Uh, you can create like remote, remote builds, uh, pa remote parallel builds. So imagine that in your laptop you have CPUs, right? And you can schedule the different models in different, in different CPUs, right? But you can do the same in Basel, but with different machines, right? So the downside of doing that in your laptop is like you are going to expand the memory because every process is going to increase the memory. So very cool. Another companies that are using Basel is SpaceX. So imagine one company that is sending rockets to the space and bringing back the rockets to the Earth is using the build system, so it's something important. And I don't know the future, and I don't know if it could be Basel, but this is like the model of build system that we have to follow. Actually, uh, if you have a project with Scala, iOS, and Android, you have to switch between the build systems. And then you have to orchestrate everything with another build script, and this is an acceptable. So with Basel, you can use only one build system and build everything. That's something that is like, the, well, I think that should be the, the future. In terms of Android, something that uh, well, called my attention, it was like uh, in the latest release notes of Android Q, Google presented uh, to, well, presented like one in the domain specific language of the Android Gradle plugin. It has another option, it's a detail now. But in the developer side, they were showing the, um, the snippets for Gradle and for Basel. So, and finally, in the last Google I.O., they had an office hour dedicated for the people that they want to migrate to Basel. So I'm not saying anything. The official build system is Gradle, of course, but even in Google, they are doing something, right? So. You have people not here, Google, but maybe you can ask, so what about, what about Basel? Okay, so again, the official build system for Android today is Gradle. So that's the, the message, right? Okay, uh, first of all, I have to think that, I have to say that oh, Gradle is, has done like, not only Gradle, the people from Android the Gradle plugin a very good job. We have a situation today that if you compare like seven, six or five years ago, it's like totally different. So still, we are struggling with a lot of things, but we have more features, we are building more things, we want to use more dependencies, we want to, a lot of things, but still, like, it's the fight. Some misunderstandings that I have seen during my career about Gradle is like some people, they don't uh, this think or they don't understand how works the Gradle stack inside the, the, the project. Uh, okay, first of all, in our Android projects, the first thing that we are going to have is Gradle. So you have two options. You can have Gradle like in a local instance or in a daemon or in a wrapper. So once you are using the wrapper of the local instance, the daemon, right, the, you are going to have access to the API of Gradle, like the project, like tasks, like the basic classes used by the tooling. 
as well, you are going to have access to the base plugins like the Java plugin or the Maven plugin. So that's mean that if you are using Gradle uh, with Java, you don't have to add anything else. So it's coming by default. And as well, Gradle is including the Kotlin DSL. That's something, well, it's including more things, but the Kotlin DSL is quite important because it was the source of problems like maybe half a year ago, half a year ago, because the Kotlin DSL is embedding the Kotlin compiler inside. So that's mean that if you are developing what one plugin with one version of Gradle, and then you want to use this plugin with another version of Gradle, there were some problems with coroutines, for example, because the transition between 1.2 and 1.3, they went from experimental to, to, to release, to release coroutines. Nowadays, if you are using Gradle 5, there is no problem at all, but you have to be, well, you have to be clear that you have to know that in your projects, you're going to use like Gradle and it's going to add these dependencies. On top of that, we are going to use the Android Gradle plugin. That's the, the, the tool that is going to help or uh, give us access to the different configuration parameters that we are using in our Android projects, right? So if you are not using the Android Gradle plugin, you cannot use like the configuration of your Android projects. And not only about the basic concepts, you have like uh, a lot of different properties. Sounds familiar for you, for example, the build types, the flavors. Flavors is a concept from Android Gradle plugin, it's not from Gradle. So if you try to migrate to Basel, you have to give a support for this abstract concept of flavors in your project. And finally, on top of that, we are going to have like the custom builds, scripts, and the plugins, right? So it's quite uh, important to have this in mind when you are trying to develop Android. So, and you want to, you want to find the problem, right? First of all, thinking which version of Gradle do you have? then the Android Gradle plugin version, and then the build scripts that we are using the custom build scripts, okay? So usually in the Android Gradle plugin has some restrictions at the time of the version of Gradle, right? So maybe if you want to use 3.4 or 3.5 Android Gradle plugin version, you have to use up to 5 Gradle version, okay? In the developer dashboard, you have like all the references about that. Okay, and another thing about Gradle, very important, is like how it works internally. Gradle has three main phases during the, when you want to execute something. If that's something that, if you have some problem in the build, if you know these concepts, maybe it's going to be easier to understand and to detect what is the problem. The first phase is the initialization phase. It's like the most simple one, and it's when um, Gradle is going to scan your settings.gradle, and it's going to look which projects or which model should include in the build, right? So if you have, this is like Android plate again, so it's going to get like about, core, and after that, if analyzing is going to determine it's a single project, it's a multi-model project, it's going to transform the models build Gradle in a root configuration uh, in a project, that project is like one of the most basic classes in Gradle, in the project class. And it's not going to do anything. But sometimes, if you're using, uh, if you want to try a Jetpack benchmark library, so you're creating a new module, you want to try whatever. So in the moment that you are including here, settings of Gradle or Gradle is going to consider inside the project. But if you remove from here, this project is not going to be included there. So that's something that you have to take in mind too. Then we go to the configuration phase. This is the most important, the most critical part, and it's where we are going to uh, execute the build gradles of every model that Gradle has considered coming from the settings that Gradle to the execution. So here is where we are applying the plugins, for example, and this is the log, and Gradle it's applying, for example, this dynamic feature in the model about because we have included. It's going to execute the code right there. So, and as well, Gradle is going to register the task related to the model. Remember that before I say about the task dependency graph that is going to be the different task is here when Gradle is trying to build the things, right? And so Gradle has a mechanism to uh, create the task, to create the code 
It doesn't mean that when you are including some code in the plugin is going to be executed, but it's possible that if you are doing wrong, the code is going to be executed and it's going to apply more time and more time, more time in your build. Another concept in the configuration phase to have very clear is the concept of the build source. Uh, by convention, Gradle is going to include this folder in the build script of your builds. Okay? You don't have to do anything uh, only to create on the, root, on the root project build source folder with a source set typical. And Gradle is going to take everything from here and it's going to be included in the build script. To have more clear the, the idea, once we are getting the configuration, first of all, Gradle is going to take the build source, the binaries, then it's going to take the main build Gradle with the class path that we are including, because again, the, for example, the Android Gradle plugin is included here, right? So, and then Gradle is going to take all the code from the build Gradle, and everything is going to be the build script for your build. The first or the second recommendation in this talk is whenever it's possible, try to strap the build logic here in the build source because you are going to create a binary, so it's going to be consumed by the binary. It's not has to be executed by KTS or by Groovy during runtime, so you are generating the binary here, and of course, it's more easy to test here. Okay, so, and finally, the final step is execution, is when we are adding the, the parameters uh, to the Gradle console and saying that, uh, assemble the back. Okay, so, this is a build script, and we are software engineers here. We are developers, and build scripts are code, and code should be tested. Okay, so when if we're, we are talking about a simple thing, right? So it's easy to test, right? But how we are going to test a build script now is like this this section. Okay, uh, do you remember this pyramid of testing where we have like on the base the unique testing, then we have the integration test, and then the end to end, the same happened on the build scripts. So in terms of the unit test, there are not much to say. Imagine that you have your, your class, you're going to test uh, using like unit four, unit five, whatever you want, and you are going to test this logic of the unit of code, right? No, no much to say. But in terms of integration tests, for integration test, that if you know, for example, is when we want to test the one class with the collaborations, right? Your class has some dependencies, has another another classes, and you want to test with this orchestration with the, with the collaborators. For this, we have the project builder. The project builder belongs to the class uh, Gradle, uh, to the package text pictures from Gradle, and you will have access of creating this project builder, the possibility to create a dummy project. So that's quite important because, uh, again, project is like one of the basic entities in the domain of the Gradle, of the Gradle runtime, right? So and we, when we want to test one plugin, for example, or when we want to test some build script, we need the project. And this is like, no, this is not a mock, right? It's not like a mock of the project, but it creates a dummy project. Later, we can interact with this project and we can create or extensions or plugins or whatever. So in that case, these uh, integration tests are becoming like easier and easier. We have different uh, accessors and getters methods. For example, we can define like what is the project, or what is the Gradle home deal, and so on. But the, the cool thing of testing in Gradle is like we have the option to create functional testing or end-to-end -end testing. So at the end, that's something that we want to, to execute. So Gradle is offering this Gradle test kit, and it's a library that we are going to talk now, but the, you can create unit tests of your build files. Let's, do, let's see an example. This is a simple test class. So the first thing that we want to do is like trying to reproduce like the environment. So we saw before in the Gradle phases that we need a settings of Gradle and the difference with Gradles. So here in our test, we are going to create our settings of Gradle and our build Gradle. In the settings, we are going to include only uh, a name, right? So, and in the build Gradle, we are going to create a task. A task that when it's executed, is going to print hello world. Okay, uh, one thing, here this task is using do last. 
This is because we want to uh, execute this command only in the execution phase, not in the configuration phase. Remember? Initialization, configuration, exactly. If you put this outside the doulas or do star, I think that or I don't remember now, so you are going to execute and it's going to have a cost in your build process. So we write our file here, our build gradle, and we are going to call the gradle runner. The gradle runner is a special class offered by gradle test kit where we can add some parameters or our instrumentation runner of Gradle. So that means that we can execute our test. Imagine that I'm doing my test in Gradle 4.10, but I want to run my test task in Gradle 5. So I can specify different versions of Gradle when I'm testing. What happened here? That if you don't have this version of Gradle, you have to download. That's normal. So uh, the arguments, they're going to be which task you want to execute, the project here, and the plugin class path, that's something important that we are going to see later. After we are setting all the parameters, we are going to build, and we will have access to the builds output, to the builds logging, and to the task execution register. So that's mean that I can assert in my test that the output of the task of the execution is hello world, and I can assert in my test that the result of the execution of the task is the internal state success. So remember that in our task, we were saying that we want to print hello world. So we are attaching the Gradle runner and we are asserting the results here. So it's uh, quite interesting. I think that why I don't understand why in Android is not more, more used. OK, to use that, so we have to use this uh, Gradle test kit dependency uh, by default. But so here in the previous example, we were seeing like a simple build uh, execute. We want to test a task that we were creating. What happened if I want to test a plugin? Here it is a problem because when I'm trying to run my test, I'm using a daemon, a Gradle version daemon, but my plugin, it contains another class path. And I have to include, in theory, manually, all these class paths to a class loader to include it in my test runner. But Gradle is offering this plugin that's called Java Gradle plugin. The name doesn't say a lot, but and with this plugin, you don't have to do anything with the manual injection, and it's going to use automatic. So the plugin, or what this plugin is going to put, the class path included in your plugin inside the execution of the, of the Gradle stack. And even you don't have to include the test implementation. Let's see another example. So here is another test, but here I'm using another, uh, another framework the Kotlin test. Why? Because Gradle test kit is agnostic of the test runner. So you can use test kit with Groovy, with Kotlin, with JUnit 4, 5, Kotlin test spec, whatever you want. So that's very cool. And you are not tied to the, to the runner. So here I'm using Kotlin test with BDD and I'm creating a build Gradle file like before. And here in my build Gradle, I'm applying two, two plugins. One, the base plugin, Java, and another plugin, right? And then I'm using like the dependencies that is using in the, in the plugin. So later, I'm going to use the Gradle Runner with the plugin class path. So in that case, I'm sure the Gradle is going to include the classes required by my plugin. And finally, I can test and assert the different expectations of the plugin. So like the result of the task execution in that case, and the implementation details of the plugin required. OK, so you can test, the unit test your, your code in your build script. You can use integration test, and you can test your pure build Gradle files too. So taking that home. Okay, the final part is uh, measuring everything because, well, as uh, we are more professionals every day, so the decisions that have to be done in the in the in our companies, 
shouldn't be driven by stack overflow, right? So sometimes, well, it's very cool, right? But sometimes we take in, uh, this is related to Gradle, huh? So that, no, you have to increase the memory heat to 16 gigs and your project is going to run faster, right? That's wrong, right? So all the decisions in the build system that affects more people in your team should be driven by results, measuring, and comparing the results, because if not, so I mean, that, that's something that maybe works on your machine, is not going to work in the, your colleague's machine, and worse, is not going to work in CI. So. Okay, the first option that we have, of course, is build scan. That's something that uh, everybody should uh, know, at least, not use, I don't know, use, but she knows, right? It's coming from Gradle and it's going to give information about the build, right? So I think that is uh, very well known by a lot of developers, but I'm going to stop in only three concepts here. So when you're executing this in your build, you're going to receive information about the duration, the memory, the usage, and so on. <laughs> So the first thing is like the startup time. So in the previous slides on the life cycle of Gradle, we saw that the initialization phase, the only thing that has to do is check which models are included on the build and transform these models in project entities from the, uh, from the Gradle model. So something more than one second here is wrong. So if you have something more than one second in the start and time, something is happening. Configuration time. This is the, this is the enemy, right? So uh, actually the baseline coming from Google and from Gradle engineers too is like should be a half millisecond per model. But we are modularizing everything, right? So that means that, well, we want to modularize, but the normal would be like half, uh, half second. Per, per, per model. So, mm, I don't know. So, I mean, uh, that's something that if you have more, you have to investigate because this is like uh, the typical cases when in the configuration time you are executing code that should be executed only in the execution phase, not in the, in, not in the configuration phase. So, keep an eye on these things. And it's giving some result about the, the for example, the script compilation, the project configuration, the task graph, uh, how, how, how long it takes. And here you can see this is like an example of 100 models where Google is using a lazy configuration. Lazy configuration is a feature from Gradle that, as the name says, that you're not going to execute anything until the task is called, right? And it's giving a lot of benefits here. The comparison for the same project using lazy evaluation or not it's like two seconds total configuration times, 1.8 seconds for using the lazy evaluation. And this is going to have an impact because you are not going to create some tasks until they are not going to be used. And finally, uh, check in the build scans the garbage collector time. That's uh, important because uh, the recommendation is uh, the garbage collector time should be less than one or two percent of the bill. So if you have one bill of 10 minutes and four minutes is in garbage collector, that's mean that your project is in a high pressure environment and you should increase the Java heap memory dedicated to the greater instance, okay? Because if not, so you don't want to spend time frozen everything because you want to clean and well, so that depends on your company, right? Build scans, quite good, right? But the real power of build scans is the uh, Gradle Enterprise. That's the paid version of Gradle where you can see more information about that, about the, the, the builds even. You can compare and aggregate the information of the different builds because at the end of the day, if you have only one build, the information and you have your, the build of the, your colleague, you need to match to compare, right? And Gradle Enterprise are offering the service. And it's not very expensive, okay? So I thought that it was very expensive, but it's not very expensive if you are in a big team, because at the end, problems of Gradle come from big teams. And this is from last week too. I saw one Twitter from one guy that they have like this cool option where they are saying that, um, 
the avoidance savings, right? So, I mean, that you can measure and you can say, oh, well, my bill now is like saving 18 minutes. So you can create a baseline or whatever. So from this moment, you can compare with the percentiles, for example, where uh, the times are becoming better. So this is with Regal Enterprise too. So my recommendation here is stuck with your CTO manager, right? And try to push. If you have a big team, uh, if you are a couple of guys, no, it's no, no the problem okay more things this is like a little bit of spam or not this is my library Talayot, and you can do the same well the same now right this is going to only to uh, measure the task okay of your of your build and then you can export this information to time series uh, databases like Prometheus like InfluxDB whatever you want it's totally extensible and then you can compare between your team right so and you can it's totally open okay uh, if you want to know more about details we can talk later and then I want to finish with one thing that we saw in the Google I.O. and it was like one announcement that they made like the Chrome Tracer and some companies uh, they have some concerns to sending the information to the Gradle servers because build scans are sending the information to the Gradle uh, servers and some companies they don't they don't want to do that. So you can use Talayot previously, right? But Talayot is not measuring anything about the, um, the initialization and configuration phase, only at execution. But Gradle, uh, Google announced this feature in your builds that you can add this uh, enable profile JSON and it's going to generate a JSON file with a lot of information, right? So, so far so good. One cool thing, this is on the bill, that means that you can aggregate and you can export this information to the, your time series databases, or then you can see it on the Chrome Tracing tool. If you don't know the Chrome Tracing tool, it's like, it's a tool where you can see uh, about the different profiling uh, process, right? If you come from from web is quite uh, popular here it doesn't see very well but you have like the different process processes here the execution the different execution of your bill and finally more information let's see let's see in detail uh, one thing. for me this is very interesting because here is like the profile yes the profile of my of my gradle build the first thing here represents the configuration phase of the build. So I can see what's the time of every plugin is dedicating in my, in my project. So for example, the uh, Android plugin, the creation of the task on the Android plugin is spending a lot of time compared with the other plugins. And it's perfect because we can go even in the detail of the line to see what's going on with our with our Gradle, uh, Gradle file. So the same for the transformations here for the for the normal task where we can do the, the things. Okay, so uh, if you click in one of the tasks, you will have all the information related with which plugins are applied, versions of, of Gradle, of course, and the state of the task in the execution. Okay, uh, one of the things that we have seen here, so you can see that there are like different, uh, different executions, right, in different threads. That's something that should be, uh, if you want to improve your build, you should use, if you have no custom tasks or custom plugins, the worker API coming from Gradle. So the worker API, imagine again, so if you have a multimodal project, so you can schedule different tasks in different CPUs, right? So, but if something is very long, for example, you are going to hack in that case like this CPU. With the worker API, you can try to span the different uh, executions of the different parts of the task in the different in the different threads, having a lot of gain. I think that Android Gradle plugin uh, they put like 95% of the task with worker API already. So we are going to have like more benefits about that. Okay, so, and yeah, I'm finishing, two minutes more, please, <laughs> two minutes more. So, um, the bill is like, you have to struggle with the bill, right? So, and this is in 2018, some recommendations, modularize everything, uh, all our benefits. So, we are going to see a talk now about modularizing too, 
And the only downside is that you are going to include a little bit of configuration time. But it's not up to you, it's up to Gradle and it's up to, to, to Google too, right? Another tip is keep simple the build configuration files. Sometimes we want to add a lot of things in the build Gradle and as you can see in the configuration phase is going to be a problem. Caching is free, it's easy. Use caching in your builds and remote caching if you want uh, on CI. Again, try to use lazy worker API initialization, uh, lazy and worker API in your, if you are using custom plugins or tasks. And for task avoidance, API implementation. If you are working more in terms of, or you want to work as a build engineer, so the recommendations, it's always like test, measure, and iterate. So you discover one problem, so there are more than one problem in the build process. So try to test the process or the thing that is going wrong, trying to measure, not by your stack overflow, by your numbers, by your results, and then iterate with the next problem, okay? You have uh, a lot of resources in this, well, there are only videos on YouTube. And before finish, I know that we don't have time, no time for questions, but like last year, instead of that, I have some questions for you, right? So, and I have some pride, so. First question, first of all, uh, what are the three main phases of the Gradle life cycle? If somebody wants to raise the hand. So, but, oh, what? Perfect, perfect. <laughs> okay, and the other one would be another build system that is not Gradle, if you remember one. <coughs> Raise your hand, okay. Oh, good. Here. Good. Okay, and that's everything that they have. Sorry for the time. Uh, this is my Twitter and I will be here all day. If you have questions or whatever, we can, we can talk. Thank you very much.